Excellent, we are here together. We're gonna to be talking about the five behaviors of a cohesive team. So how many of you out there have heard of the five dysfunctions of a team? All right, lots of hands out there. That's, it's a really famous book written by Patrick Lencioni. Patrick Lencioni partnered with Wiley and they created this new program and it's called the five cohesive behaviors of a team. And it marries DISC and the five dysfunctions. And it talks from a team perspective and evaluates how do I become more effective at building teams? So you'll notice that we've got the model up here. It is a pyramid. It's designed so that each team really focuses first on trust. It's a baseline. We have to have trust in a team in order to be effective. And most of us have been part of teams where there's been no trust, and we know how painful that can be. So if you don't have solid trust, you can't go farther up and be more effective as a team. The next level is conflict. If I don't trust somebody, I'm not gonna have healthy conflict with them. So I've got a young woman named Alex on my team, and if she doesn't trust me, she's not gonna come back and say, Sarah, that was a really bad idea, or actually, that doesn't work so well for me. We need to have healthy trust in order to have conflict that produces healthy results. From there, we go to the next level, which is commitment. Within the commitment piece, we know that in order to get people to buy in and to have clarity of what we're looking for, we really need to have healthy conflict. Because if we don't have the conflict, we don't get people to buy in. We don't get people to weigh in, and we don't, we're not clear on where we're going. So nobody commits. So if you've ever been in a meeting, and then like two weeks later, that whole meeting happens again, and you're like, didn't we talk about this? I thought we resolved this. It's because you didn't have enough trust to have healthy conflict to then commit to that process. The next step is really this accountability piece. So how do I hold others accountable? But it's really about peer-to-peer -peer accountability. If we all agree, if we all commit to our mission, our vision, our values, then we can hold one another accountable in that process. And it's not that the manager doesn't have a role, doesn't have any accountability responsibilities. He does, uh, or she does, but the reality is peer-to-peer -peer accountability is most effective. And from there, once you've got everybody accountable, committed, you've had healthy conflict, you've got solid trust, results is the next piece. You're going to be productive, you're gonna reach bottom line pieces, you're gonna reach goals as an organization. Those are all parts to this. We all know of teams that get results, but they have this really dysfunctional environment. And the reality is, they actually succeed in spite of themselves. Because <laughs> you might get some results, but if everything else is broken in your pyramid and all of the other cohesive behaviors don't exist, they're not repeatable results. So sometimes people think they're doing fine because they're getting good results, but that's not really the true measurement of a successful team. A successful team has these five cohesive behaviors. So that's what we're gonna be talking about as we look at these components. How do we get to the heart of each of these levels within this team right here?